of poetry. I love him when he does his work, especially the peas. You want to do that tonight, brother? I'll do it for you, bro. Oh, cool. He's about to come up here and do his thing, so what I need you to do is to start picking up the energy. Let's get up into the mic, Keith Horton. I want everybody to give a hand for all of the artists that came up before. Outstanding. Energy is amazing in here today. Michael Geffner, thank you for having me. Um, I, I'm glad to be um, featured in your, in your production. So really, really a pleasure for you, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Right. I was expecting to get on this late, and um, I feel like I'm coming down with a bit of a cold, but... I am Keith Keith, K Swift, K Boogie, Kato, depending on what era you know me from. <laughs> but as of right now, as I stand here now, I am Keith the Poet Horton and I'm here to entertain you. Alright? Alright. First piece that I'm gonna do is one of the first pieces that I wrote, or should I say one of the first pieces I performed. Um, it's called The Hustler's Reflection. Um, basically it goes through the revelations of somebody that was living in a way that he needed to change. Uh, and it's called a hustle of reflection. Back in the day on the corner with my cats in the cypher, spitting lyrics to pre-recorded tracks. Jazz sport packed with fat Buddha sacks for those that saw the pause for the pressures of being black. Cats passed that ruled this stroll before me, dripping gold while they warned me of the urban insanity of my self-appointed legacy, but this was my reality. Subway stench seeped from the vents of the sidewalk where I stood in streets of Timberlands, posted up 40 in hand, flossing, trying to justify pushing pharmaceutical poison, corrupting my nation with instant gratification, sucking the life out of their souls, watching my block grow barren all in the quest of coming up. But as I rise, I am forced to descend and peer into the eyes of an addicted friend, knowing my contribution, having no solution. Did the means really justify the end? Thank you. Thank you. This one is for Nathan P. <clears throat> this one is called let me tell you the story behind this I was in the New York Recon one day and I saw this, uh, this phenomenal poet and he did poetry that had verses in it and the first letter of every word was every letter in the alphabet he did the A's and then he did the B's and then he did the C's and I said I want to do that I got the P's, I'm working on the rest. <laughs> <laughs> this is entitled P Dope. And this is for Nathan P. Yeah. Nathan P. P, yeah. <laughs> Pulmonary palpitations persist produced by premonitions of her pomegranate kiss. Pushing pulsing passion past the point of ration, pausing all possibility to resist. I push and pull with the probability of us practicing prose and poetry, plumb purple with humility and pride in prison when I pass her person. Prepped in private to pointedly push up like a project player. Pleasantries prolifically packaged with each compliment I pay her, but she's an A-type personality slayer. And I proceed to turn the putty in her pretty perfect palm. Palette pales to parch and pasty from the first note of a song. And if loving her is wrong, then Color me bright wrong, and I stand here prosecuted, and even prostituted, because I relinquish my last penny just to have her on my arm. Pedo. Mm. Right. Yeah. New shit. New, New shit. shit. I wrote this two days ago. Mm. It's, two it's days. entitled God's Business. Is in the book already? Who's piece of paper? <laughs> yeah, this is the second edition. I'm gonna tell you. It's called God's Business. Yesterday I wanted to run. I wanted to run out of my flesh like caterpillar to, from chrysalis and be born anew. 
I wanted to stretch and streak skinless through the streets so folks could see my blood scream, taste my blood, pulse and surge in time with the beat of my heart. Reckless and rapid and in pursuit of my desperate feet as they slapped damp grass or bleached sand or whatever natural surface I ran on and ran through to get away from what I was running from in the first place. I wanted to wear my insides outside and use my brittle bones as weapons against the lies and the greed. I wanted to spray my marrow in the face of the dirty politicians and perverse priests, the corporate greed and the crooked police. I wanted to run past them and spray my marrow in their faces because my marrow is from the core and I know of its authenticity. I wanted to run and spray and scream loud and angry from burning lungs and breathe fire on the selfish and start all over. And then God snatched me from my nap while I prostrated in prayer with a grip all encompassing and humbling. And he reminded me that his eyes see all and he knows all and he is all. And I needed to sit down and let him handle his business. <laughs> The New York Region Poets Cafe is one of my favorite places to perform, and it's because there's so many legends performed there. There was a um, poet, uh, one of the original last poets, um, by the name of Pedro Petri. He performed uh, a piece there entitled They Work. And uh, the next two pieces that I'm going to do spin off to that particular piece. That piece moved me to this day. You can see it on YouTube. It's phenomenal. Uh, this one is entitled They Bled, and this is for people in the inner city that have uh, suffered from the hardships of injustice. It's called They Bled. I'm going to do this without the microphone. They Bled. They Bled screams from Florida imported in a 17-year-old memory. They Bled nectar from strange fruit hanging from southern trees. They bled the mixture of lethal injection from tired eyes, and after 52 bullets, they never cried, but they bled. They bled on concrete streets from Watts to Washington Heights. They bled from the Bronx to El Barrio, and from Compton to Cabrini Grand Green. You got it. They bled on concrete streets from Watts to Washington Heights. They bled from the Bronx to La Barrio from, and from Compton to Cabrini Green. The stains were never washed from the pavement and they were judged from light years away. Wondering why songs like We Shall Overcome Someday played like a crack pipe dream in streets that were always red and always wet from the blood that they bled. And they bled in project hallways because they fit the description of a perp that committed a crime five blocks away. They bled on a cold December night in Club Kahlua when wedding bells were supposed to ring on the following day. Mm -hmm. They read in the, on the steps of a police precinct in Brooklyn, sodomized in the cell by the boys in blue, on a cold bathroom floor, and we marched in the streets because that's all we've really been conditioned to do. And strange fruit grows from new trees. And the hemp noose turns to lead. And they never cried or bitched or moaned. But they bled. Thank you. Yeah. I actually got two more pieces that I want to do. I have a piece that um that I wrote that is an homage to the workers, people that get out here and work and do what they do, feed their families, and, and in some cases just to survive. Uh, homeless, uh, I'm sorry, um, single parents and people that um, are doing what they have to do to make the ends meet. This is for the workers. For those who heave through heavy days with knuckles scraped raw and black blue in corporate fields and hungry streets. This is for those with spines bent weary from the weight of debt owed to elder and child and who work through the night to keep that youngin' from running wild. This is for those that bear that load with pride and breathe truth 
with every breath pushed from tired lungs. This is for sun not hot enough, storms not dark enough, and temptation not great enough to hold a reservation. This one here is for dedication, for those who get off on third eye vision instead of mental masturbation. This is for those that walk the talk that they talk and leave footprints of action indented in the pavement. For every husbandless mother and wifeless father that never took no for an answer because no is not an option when your backyard is piled up with wood and you're behind on the chopping. And the truth is you spent part of last month's rent on grocery shopping. Yeah, this is for the real live hustlers at the convention, not the honorable mention. This is for the iron backs that helped to build this nation. For that five block walk to the bus, to the train, to the hoopty parked at the station. This is for three years on the grind without a vacation and Saturday night in front of the TV with the fam as the only means of recreation. This is for building the better that situation. This ain't for the slingers or the platinum chain blingers, tissueing off while their kids brave the cold in gloves with no fingers. No, this is for the truth bringers, the bell to bell ringers, for attending that meeting at the PTA instead of getting high with Jose from around the way, or that random dude you met on Facebook yesterday. No, this is for the workers, for those that pay homage to the whip mark backs of our ancestors. This is for the nine to five and then straight to the part timers, the metro card holders and the subway stair climbers. This is for the red, white and blue collars. And as long as you ain't worshiping that dollar and you're true to why you do what you do, then this one's for you. This is for the workers. Wow. Keep calling me old school because I'm not preoccupied with the bling of the shine and because I spit to a different beat from a different time. Because my lady is my queen, not my bitch or my dime, and I no longer have a need to pack a gat or a nine. So y'all keep calling me old school. Because I refer to my residence as my house, not my crib. And when y'all was passing the Dutch, I wasn't pressed for first dibs. The bill on my fitted is curbed, and I still call it my lid, and I didn't do at least an 18-month bid, so y'all keep calling me old school. Because you knew what I was saying, even though I wasn't saying, yo, you know what I'm saying? After every thought, thought I was relaying. And because selling rock on the block wasn't my idea of parlaying. And when you greet me as player, I tell you I'm done with playing, so you keep calling me old school. Because my sights are set on keeping my children in check. While you repping your sex, spilling blood for respect, worshiping the beam of the Benz and the Lex, just a first time felon getting secondhand sex. Mm. And truth be told, I never move with the masses. And I'm tight leery about the curriculum in your school's classes. So whether my school be old or your school be new, class will soon be dismissed if you keep doing like you do. Class will soon be dismissed if you keep doing you. Class will soon be dismissed, and our people will too. Old school. I come from a sordid past. I guess the sway front was a giveaway. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> um, Done some things, I hear people say, you know, I don't have any regrets. I'm not fortunate enough to say that. What I will say is that I'm not ashamed of anything that I've been through because it helped me to be the person that I am. Right. Good job. Um, the arrival, thank you, thank you. The arrival of my daughter saved my life. I call her my angel to this day. She's my angel. She's 19 years old and she's a beautiful, beautiful woman. But I wrote this in reflection of my angel Ashanti and it's entitled Angel and I'd like to read it, share it with you. <clears throat> my first glimpse of life was the crown of her head, escaping safe and warm, embracing cold and hard, silent until compelled by a hand slapped on her bum to yell and let the world know of her arrival. Witnessed her inhale cold and hard, pained for her, wept for her, scared for her, caught between the emotions of her arrival and her departure. 
Tears stream down my face, causing permanent tracks. Footprints, if you will, of purging memories like rusted shackles in Williamburg, Williamsburg and tattered Confederate flags. Of the memorial on Sweet Auburn Ave, up the block from the church where Martin birthed his dream. Like Flip on 163rd, stuck there since 1982, with tracks etched in his face or in his arms. Footprints of his own, if you will. Like empty crack vials under monkey bars where I used to play. Like cannabis haze taken into lung to help the memories go away. And lacking the courage to do life on life's terms and melt down the shackles, burn the flags. Dream like Martin did until I heard her yell. And felt her sound vibrate my every cell. And flood them with light to make my shoulders heavy with debt owed to our ancestors. My heart turned buoyant to float somewhere in the innocence of her eyes. She looked through me to help me see my strength somewhere behind me where I'd left it long ago. She smiled at me, evaporating my tears. I kissed her brand new cheek, and I knew instantly that my angel had arrived. One more piece that I want to share with you. Mike, is that all right? That's cool. <clears throat> if I can locate it. This is a piece um, written after the Tray Mar Trayvon Martin tragedy. Well, let's call it what it was, the Trayvon Martin murder. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Quiet Eyes for Trayvon's dad. And what I want to say has been ripped away by the Florida night. Raped from my lips to join the screams of the gunshot's echo. My mouth barren except for the taste of his blood in my throat. And the sweetness of multicolored dreams tucked in his pocket. What I need to feel has been paralyzed by hate. And a father's rage burns red in my chest while mother's tears infuse my trembling face and fury bubbles from my every pore. My nostrils stretch to know the scent of the twilight walk that Sunday eve that ended in his death. And I understand the hate, the torrid fire in his father's eyes and the taste mixed with blood and tears and the sickening need for vengeance. And while marchers march and preachers preach, and multicolored dreams lay out of reach, and a father sits with quiet eyes, his rage hushed to a smolder, void of the man-child's laughter stolen from him by the hate of another. Mm. I'm Keith Horton, y'all. The book is called Urban Escape. I have business cards. I have business cards. I unfortunately.